Hey there, I hope you're doing okay and uh, welcome back to another video here with me Jennifer Kirk on my YouTube channel and today's video is going to be a box opening and review. I've bought a few bits and pieces. Now these might seem a little bit on the mundane side being that they're just run-of-the-mill wagons but actually I think in the grand scheme of things they're just as important as everything else because you know locomotives might just be the big ticket items but they need something to pull. So without further ado let's take a closer look. <laughs> Today what I've got is an Oxford Rail wagon. They've brought out some new re-liveries of some of the very popular wagons that have been coming out over the last year or two and this particular wagon is a re-livery on their four plank North British style open wagon. So it comes here in the pretty standard Oxford Rail box. Now I've already reviewed this in the original North British Railway livery and uh, also New Battle Coal livery and I think as well we've done the, well certainly I have it in Northeastern Railway livery. So what I'm going to really concentrate on today is the livery details. If you want to see a much more extensive review of the fundamental wagon itself, then go back and have a look at some of those videos where I go in a little bit more depth to the structure and the design and the build of the wagon itself. But without further ado, let's take a look at this livery. Now I've got on the end there a catalogue number OR76MW4009. So if you're wanting to look for one of these for yourself, that's the magic code that you need to be able to go and look this up and uh, get one for yourself. But we're going to get it out of its box. And uh, I actually quite like this wagon. It does have a few foibles, uh, if you want to look at those, go back to my previous video. But really, in the grand scheme of things, it's a welcome addition to the ready-to-run range. It's not a duplication of what any of the other ready-to-run manufacturers have been producing to a really high standard. And that only has to be applauded, that you know we have another different type of wagon here to add to our fleets. What is interesting about this though is that being a North British based wagon that would be more locally found in the Scottish area in the pre-grouping period, it seems a little odd for it to have received the livery of the Mountserol Granite Company, which is actually in Leicestershire. But I think what this boils down to is that they needed a base wagon for this livery that was more in keeping with sort of the 1890s through to just around the turn of the uh, First World War period. And this wagon fits the bill. So we have to overlook a little bit that it is the same base wagon as the North British one. And um, it is the case that the pre-1923 railway clearinghouse designs, there was so much more variation. Uh, it's very easy to forget when you look at the range of wagons that are available from Hornby, from Backman and from Oxford Rail, that they really just scratch the surface of the, the number of different diagrams and designs of wagons that actually were out there. So I suppose this is probably a case of it's the closest ready to run design that Oxford Rail had in their stable that was suitable for this livery. What's interesting is when we've looked at the close-ups on this, the builder's plate actually says Caledonian Railway Builders St. Rollox or Rolox. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that. Somebody will almost certainly put me right on that. But it would appear that this base wagon is actually accurate for this livery. It seems maybe it's a case that this is a wagon that's been sold out of service by the Caledonian Railway and has been uh, given a new lease of life by a commercial concern in Leicestershire. The livery application itself really caught my eye in the shop and it's one of the reasons that I got this wagon. The other reason is that I've been following the reinstatement of the Mount Sorrel, uh 
Quarry Railway, which has uh, been rebuilt uh, all the way to the uh, quarry off the Great Central Railway at Swithland Sidings. And they've actually uh, restored and liveried a number of wagons in uh, typical Montserrat granite liveries. So it kind of fitted in with a project that I've been following since day one with uh, quite a lot of interest. And also, I think it's the red buffer shanks, uh, but there was something about this livery that really caught my eye. And uh, Oxford Rail have really excelled themselves with this. It's a pretty sharp livery, and unlike some of the red base wagons from Oxford Rail, where they seem to have had a lot of problems in getting the white lettering on without it looking pale and see-through. On this particular wagon, they've overcome that issue and the lettering on the side is very crisp and clear and there doesn't appear to be any bleed through from the livery underneath and I really like that. It put me off the red base liveried wagons that have come from Oxford Rail that you could see the black strapping through and the, the red underneath kind of made the white look a little bit pink but we don't get any of that with this. We also get this um, sort of um, ovoid shape in the blue with the uh, stony Stanton Junction. Yes, <laughs> I'm reading this upside down. So if I sound like I've, I've forgotten how to read, it's because I'm, I'm reading this upside down. Stony Stanton Junction. Oh, it's probably easier if I just turn it around, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right, Jenny. Just turn it round. Yeah, you thicko. Near Elmsthorpe, South Leicestershire. So I'm not actually sure whether that is the current location where they've reinstated the Mount uh, uh, Railway, or whether originally the company may have had a number of different locations. I'm sure there'll be somebody who will enlighten me in the comments. But that presumably gives a home station and location for this wagon to be returned empty to. We've also got tear weights, load weights, and we've got, uh, we've actually got three plates on the wagon's underframe there. And again, I don't know whether it's because I'm just getting old and my eyes are not what they used to be, or the fact, probably more likely, that the quality of this printing is so fine that um, they're able to legibly print things down to such a small scale that uh, we'll probably see under closer magnification what these actually say. Now I suspect that one of them will be the wagon builder's plate, so it'll say who built the wagon. It may even give us a date, which is a good clue as to when this wagon might be suitable for, and I've got a suspicion that uh, this wagon and this livery will be eminently suitable for my pre-1923 rolling stock and locomotive collection, which is something I always have an eye out for when buying wagons. In terms of other plates, I'm not entirely sure. There may be something like, for repairs, please advise, or give details of the ownership of the wagon, or maybe even railway clearing house registration details. I'm not sure. We're going to look at that a little bit more closely under magnification. The wheels as well, we've got the white walls on there, all nicely put on, and that is actually really quite neat. We're not seeing any bleed over onto the actual running tread of the wheels. That is very neatly applied in there, and it does actually make the wagon stand out. It, it kind of brings the livery out, so I really do like that. If we go to the ends, well, the, the base wagon itself is a four plank end door tipping wagon. So on one end, we've got the end door with the um, the really nice fine metal, uh, I think they're sort of um, hinges on there, but they are separately applied details and they are really nicely done. But we've got the number 443, which is, um, yeah, it's the running number of the wagon. But these buffers are what really draws the eye and it's just I'm struggling to kind of work out what it is about you know the red buffer shanks but with the grey buffer beam what it is about it that really really works for me but it does it's eye-catching it stands out and it, it gives an element of interest to this livery um, that makes it stand out in a train. And, you know, aesthetically, that's probably why a lot of people buy these wagons, you know. So something like that really can only be a bonus. 
On the other end of the wagon, we've got the uh, the non-tipping end. So we've got all the metalwork and these stanchions picked out in black. And again, the wagon's number 443. And uh, just like the other end, we've got the turned metal buffer heads in the red shanks. And they were actually a lot better. Oh, I spoke too soon there. I'm just looking there. They do come out but they're not as bad as when these wagons first came to the market the buffers were notorious for just coming loose but uh, they do seem to have kind of fixed that a little bit now i'm going to have a quick overview of the underside we've got couplings in NEM pockets and the placement of the NEM pockets on these wagons are really quite thoughtful because they're hidden within the footprint of the wheels. So when you'd look side on to the wagon, if you wanted to change these for different couplings, something like a, a three link drop coupling, then you can remove these tension lock couplings and there's no real visible signs of that NEM pocket at the back there. So it's really well thought out design. We've also got a crisp demarcation between the black of the underframe and the W irons and the the sort of this um, this greeny grey, the slate grey of the woodwork. It's a really nice crisp demarcation. Overall, I have to say that uh, as livery applications go, this really caught my eye and uh, I give it a favourable 9 out of 10. I think, you know, we've got a good solid addition to my pre-grouping fleet. Well, I hope that's been really informative to you. Don't forget to like this video and share it too. And also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And ring that bell and it'll let you know the moment that they go up so you won't miss out. But until next time, well, thanks again for watching. And uh, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take really, really good care of yourself. And we'll see you back here next time. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane and Bob 310. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.